Hey everybody, if you're new to overclocking like me, you might find this video really useful. My goal for myself was to overclock my Ryzen 2700X as high as I could across all eight cores uh, at 1.40 volts or less. Now the motherboard I'm using is an ASUS Prime X470 Pro. So you got to compare apples to apples. So, but if you look in the left-hand corner up there, you can see I'm at a 4.150 megahertz. I've got my RAM overclocked to 3600 megahertz. Talking about my RAM, I got a 2x16 kit of ballistic sports gaming memory rated at uh, 3200. And it easily overclocked to 3600 with, um, with no problems whatsoever using this motherboard. But anyway, you can hear, see the snapshot here on the, the easy mode screen. If you look towards the, the top, right in the middle, you can see I got a voltage under 1.4, fluctuating, what, 1.38, maybe a little bit lower. And you can see my motherboard temperature there, really, really nice, at about 28 degrees Celsius. Disclaimer here, when you do this overclocking, in my opinion, you need to get an aftermarket cooler, either a nice air cooler. Um, I'm using Cooler Masters uh, Hyper 212 Black Edition with the RGB. Uh, I don't think the Rafe, uh, the stock cooler that came with the 2700 is capable of, of keeping the temperatures down enough to, to really do some serious overclocking. And from all the reading I've done, uh, the reason why I wanna keep it under 1.40 volts is uh, I just keep reading that if you go over that over a long period of time and have it set at that voltage above 1.4, it may degrade your, your CPU. So that's why I'm sticking at 1.4 or less. This 4.15 uh, gigahertz, it's stable. I've done stress tests and torture tests and the whole nine yards. But anyway, let me show you what I did to get to that. First of all, you want to go to the advanced mode down here on the bottom right. So just click on that. And let's go right here to the core ratio. You just manually type that in the 41.50. I've tried higher, but I couldn't get stable settings. The TPU, you want to keep that at keep current settings. So take it off TPU one or TPU two. The performance BIOS, just leave it auto for now. And then we want to kind of scroll down. This is what uh, I had problems with because I'm just, uh, I'm new to it. You wanna change um, your VDD CR CPU voltage from auto and you wanna go to the offset mode and then you wanna change it to plus. What I didn't know when I first started is that you have to do the offset voltage to actually pick the voltage you want. When I was looking at Ryzen software, there's that number, the 1.21, that's the standard that shows up on Ryzen Master. So when I looked at my Ryzen Master and it said 1.21, you know, overclocked to, to four gigahertz, I said, like, wow, that's really low, but it doesn't include the offset that it uses to get there. So this is where that comes in. So that 1.21250 with an offset of 0.175, if you add those two together, that's where you get that 1.38. I'm keeping it just below the 1.4. So if you do that, you're underneath 1.40 volts. And for me, at 4.15 gigs, I am, I'm clean. Um, I'm stable with all the torture tests and whatnot. So let's go to the RAM. As you can see right there, I'm at my 3200, but this motherboard allows you to overclock, at least for me, to the 3600. So doing that and that, I have a nice clean overclock that's really stable. Again, I have to play with it more to get, um, you know, maybe to 4.175 or 4.2 or higher. But again, I'd have to increase that voltage. I'm a little nervous to do that because I've only had my computer for seven weeks now and I don't want my build to blow up. But anyway, let me show you a few things. Cinebench 15, Cinebench 20 and uh, show you what that does. All right, as you can see from the Ryzen Master program right here, I am at 4.15 gigahertz, and you can see that CPU voltage, it's that standard um, CPU that starts out with the 1.21. So there's no way that I can be at that 
that speed at that volt because it doesn't the Ryzen master software doesn't take into account the the offset that we put in that 0.175 but anyway let's try Cinebench 15 and see how that does and we'll take a look at the temperatures as we do it okay we got to about 62 degrees and you can see the score of 1876 so pretty decent but let's run it again uh, without the Ryzen master software open and see if we can beat that 1876 well that didn't do anything for us we're still at 1876 i'm going to pump it one more time and if you look at my previous scores you can see i have did an 1883 is my record all right and i've just tied my previous record of 1883 so not bad 4.15 gigahertz rams at 3600 let's try cinnabench 20. we're going to first try it with uh, ryzen master open so we can look at the temperatures 66 degrees 68 degrees 69 degrees all right so just under 70 degrees for the cinnabench 20 and a score of 4220 Let's see if we can get a little bit better by taking the Ryzen Master out of here. And let's hit it. So you can see I do have that Cooler Master Hyper 212 cooling, air cooling my, my case. I do have two very nice Noctua fans helping out with the exhaust. Got, what? One, two, three, four, six fans total. I got them running full bore to get that uh, full load here about 70 degrees. So I definitely recommend getting an aftermarket cooler, either a nice air cooler or an AIO to replace the, the stock cooler that came with the Ryzen 2700X. So let's see if uh, we can beat the 4224. Okay, so we did not. 4220. But in conclusion, you know, if you don't want to use the Ryzen software to overclock your CPU with your Asus uh, motherboard that we have, make sure to go in the BIOS and set it up and get everything stable. Go as high as you can. I really wish I can get to 4.2 or 4.25, but it just isn't in the cards. Um, I'm still having fun doing it. I'm still not an expert on all these voltages, so I'm going to keep studying, keep looking at other YouTube videos to see if I can even pump up this 2700X even more. It's not that I need the power, because I do very light video editing and very light gaming. I'm just more of an enthusiast, and I just really, really am curious to how far I can push this CPU without blowing it up. If you know if you can go over 1.40 volts safely, let me know in the comments. If you found this at all entertaining or um, helpful, make sure to give this thing a, a big thumbs up and consider subscribing. Uh, my realistic 2700X overclocking video and CPU build. I'll see you the next time, folks. Bye-bye.